To know somebody's secrets is to control them. Thanks to technological advances, it's easy to discover those secrets. It's easy to be a spy. Go to the right places and you can find the kind of equipment for which James Bond was licensed to kill. But with the help of science, you can dig even deeper into someone's personal habits. Even computers can't keep their secrets safe from the master spy. But why access someone's database when science shows it may be possible to gain entry to their minds? There are people who believe it could be done to whole populations and others who believe it already is. Their methods may be changing, but the spies among us are still in business. The first place most spies search is through the rubbish. It might be unsophisticated, but it can be very effective. Next step, electronic surveillance. And in London is a specialist shop. Private customers, government agencies, even the military, buy their bugs and spy cameras from here. There's a transmitter for every occasion. We have a fully functional calculator which will hear all conversation within a microphone range of approximately seven meters. This is a mains powered room transmitter containing a highly sensitive microphone and that would permanently transmit all sound heard within a radius of approximately seven meters. This is a fully functional uh, pen which has a built-in radio transmitter and a microphone which will hear conversation within a range of two to three meters. If business secrets are what you're after, then a recording briefcase might be of help. It's turned on with a simple touch. The problem with such gadgets is that you have to be on site to activate them or be nearby to receive transmissions. What if your target is in Seattle and you're on the move? New York, Paris. London. Their surveillance doesn't have to stop. A phone call from any location in the world can activate this. The ultimate infinity receiver. Attached to your target's line, it will let you tap their phone, bug their room, and even listen to a bug in another building. But bugging is nothing new. Science now makes it possible to dig even deeper. Courts and employers have long used blood and urine analysis to dig into people's darkest secrets. But it's hard to take such samples without letting the subject know. You can get a hair sample without exposing your identity. The target's electric razor is a perfect source. Or simply get to know their barber. The blood supplies that nourishes a growing hair also deposits telltale impurities like medication or illegal drugs. As the hair grows at a rate of about a centimeter a month, it records a history of drug use, like growth rings in a tree. At present, it takes a small lock of hair to test for drugs, but the technology is getting more sensitive. It shouldn't be very long before all it takes is a few strands. The process is straightforward. Once in the lab, the sample is placed in a capsule with a couple of ball bearings. Then it's shaken until it's pulverized into a fine powder. Mixed with solvents, the sample releases its drugs. 
A machine known as a gas chromatography mass spectrometer then precisely identifies those drugs by their molecular weight. It's used in business to determine drug habits. With the growth in biochemical surveillance, laboratories like this could become the spy shops of the future. But how do you keep tabs on a moving target? Easy. Master spies have eyes in the sky. In the Cold War, the U-2 spy plane was America's eyes on the world below. It uncovered the secrets of Cuban missile bases in the 60s. In the 90s, spy satellites provided information on Iraqi defences. But if your espionage budget is a little more down-to-earth, there are alternatives. It may look like just another radio-controlled model, but this prototype micro-air vehicle carries a minute video camera and transmitter. Got a picture? You have a picture? Yeah, the picture's good. Okay, getting ready to launch. You all trimmed out? Yeah. Weighing just 42 grams and with a wingspan of 45 centimeters, this is the shape of spy planes to come. It's small enough to fly in through a command post or warehouse window and transmit images back. Even if it's destroyed, you have the pictures. Get it. The miniaturization of the video camera and transmitter is impressive, but the real trick is controlling such a small plane. Oh. <laughs> For now, battery power limits their missions to a couple of minutes, and the weather can be a problem. But it won't be long before these airborne snoops are telling you just what the neighbors are doing. But what about what they're thinking. Thanks to the computer age, it's never been easier to steal people's ideas. And you don't have to risk being caught to capture someone's secrets. In less than 20 years, computers have become indispensable. They guard the valuable information of schools, hospitals, homes and businesses. But if information has value, it's worth stealing. Every day, hackers break into computer networks to cause mayhem or steal data. One research group estimates hacking costs corporate America over five billion dollars a year. Whenever information is displayed on a computer screen, it creates weak radio signals known as VANEC radiation. Some of those signals come directly from the screen, some from unshielded cables acting like aerials. Using a technique called tempest monitoring, you can intercept those signals. And reproducing them isn't much more complicated than tuning into television. It's believed that in 1994, the FBI used this technique to catch Aldrich Ames, the CIA officer who betrayed at least nine US agents in the Soviet Union. But there is a defense against tempest snooping. It's the Beamer tent, a tent with a difference. A special metal fabric creates a shield that prevents any stray emissions from escaping. Even the power supply is isolated to prevent it acting as an antenna. The portability of the Beamer system makes it the ideal shield for businessmen on the move. It can guard against the most determined of snoop attacks. Exposed to the outside world, the signals given off by the screen come through loud and clear. Once the tent is sealed, it is impenetrable. But there is a way to turn someone's computer into a double agent. Imagine a piece of software that works perfectly for your target, but as soon as their back is turned, 
it goes to work for you, sending its data via the phone, internet, or radio transmitter. You don't have to imagine, the US government has already used it. In the 1980s, intelligence agents stole and altered a program called Promise. Originally designed to track offenders through the justice system, the modified program was then sold to foreign countries and was widely used to organize sensitive information. What those governments didn't know was that the program was sending that information back to Washington. In fact, the computer could be the all-round spy tool. You can already tap into a growing number of spy cameras linked to the internet. Okay, there we go. That's, that's Video conferencing cameras can snoop into offices and homes. Personal computers can even recognize speech. The next meeting is going to take place in our London location, period. Please bring the material I requested, period paragraph. Combine their eyes and ears with the right software and network links and one day computers could do much of our spying for us. Okay. For the United States and its allies, that day is here. A global computer spy net exists. Finding useful information among the massive electronic communications is like looking for an intelligence needle in a communications haystack. But nothing is impossible for the master spy. Near Blenheim in New Zealand, something is listening to the world and it's being exposed by the author of this book. Phone calls, faxes, emails by computer, te uh, telexes, all the ways that people communicate today, that's what the system designed to catch gets it all. Not far from Blenheim is why 